Hello, in this video we're going to look at a specific type of sequence, the arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is where you have a pattern of numbers where to get from one number to the next you add the same number. 4, 7, 10, 13. That would be arithmetic because I'm going plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, and so on. So anytime you add or subtract the same number between each term, that is arithmetic. So there is a formula that helps us find the nth term in an arithmetic sequence. That is, this formula I have in the blue box allows me to find maybe the fifth term in a sequence. And you just do that by adding the first term plus d, which is the common difference. So that would be the what you add and subtract between each number. 5 minus 1, n is 5 because we're finding the fifth term. So a sub 1 is the first term. d is what we call the common difference, what you add or subtract between each number. And n is the number, the term of the sequence. Not the value of it, but which position are you at. And we're not going to go into deriving this formula. We're just going to accept it at face value, take it. We're going to use it to write a rule for the following sequence. This one down here. So a sub n, what is the general rule to find the nth term? You take the first term plus the common difference. So how do I find that? 7, 7, 7. Now in general, if you can't just visually look at it and quickly see the common difference, to figure out you go one term minus the previous term and the result is the common difference. So I could go 40 minus 33 and the result is the common difference. To find the common difference, you take a term and you subtract the previous term. So 7 is our common difference times n minus 1. There you go. Yeah, easy as that. That is how you write the rule for an arithmetic sequence. And then we, of course, would use that to be like, oh, so what is a sub 12? What's the 12th term? So I'd go 5 plus 7 times 12 minus 1. So the 12th term is 7 times 11 plus 5, which is 5 plus 77. So 82 is that. So that's better than a recursive sequence, a recursive rule in this case, because I didn't need to find the first 11 terms in order to know the 12th term. I was able to just straight up quickly find the 12th term. Let's try a harder example. This one takes our arithmetic sequence and finding the rule and takes it a step up. Some arithmetic sequence has a third term equal to 13, and the common difference is 5, so therefore, what's the 12th term? Well, in order to find the 12th term, we want to have the rule that allows us to find it out. But I don't know what my first term is. See, in order to write the rule, which is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1, I need to know both the first term and the common difference, but I don't know my first term yet. I only know my third term. Well, what information does that give us? We know that the third term is equal to the first term plus the common difference, which is 5, times n minus 1. Well, what is n in this case? It's 3 because I'm on my third term. So, hey, I just created this formula where 13 equals a sub 1 plus 5 times 2. So, 13 equals a sub 1 plus 10, or a sub 1 equals 3. So hey, I just found what I need. I have a sub 1, and I have the d, the common difference. So now I can write the rule, a sub n is equal to 3 plus 5 times n minus 1. So what is the 12th term? We go a sub 12 is equal to 3 plus 5 times 11, because of 12 minus 1, which is 3 plus 55. So 58 is the 12th term. Let's take it up one more level. All right, this is the harder version. The fourth term out of an arithmetic sequence is 20. So a sub 4 equals 20. The 13th term is 65. a sub 13 equals 65. What is a sub 22? So for our process, we are going to find the rule. The rule a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Again, we have to figure out what the common difference and the first term are. I don't know either, but a similar process as that previous example. 
The fact that a sub 4 equals 20 tells me that 20 also equals the first term plus the common difference times 4 minus 1. n is 4 because we're on the fourth term. Similar thing for the second one, plus d times 13 minus 1. Notice how that gives me an equation, a sub 1 plus 3d, and down here, a sub 1 plus 12d, and that equals 65, and the top one equals 20. Hey, so I have these two equations, two variables, hmm, two equations, two unknowns, hey, that's a system. So we have to solve a system of equations. So we're going to go, and I'm just going to rewrite them down here, and let's solve this by elimination. So I'm going to multiply, let's see, I'll multiply the first equation by negative 1. So that gives me negative a sub 1 minus 3d equals negative 20. And we can add it to the second equation. And we get 0 a sub 1, negative 3 plus 12 is 9d, negative 20 plus 65 is 45, divide by 9, d equals 5. Plug that into the equation, and we get a sub 1 plus 12 times 5 equals 65. a sub 1 plus 60 equals 65, and a sub 1 is 5. Yay, I found what I need to write the rule. a sub n is equal to 5, because that's the first term, plus 5, because that's the common difference, times n minus 1. So finally, what is a sub 22? Well, 5 plus 5 times 21, okay, because that's 22 minus 1, which is 5 plus 5 times 21 is 105, 110. So the 22nd term in the sequence is 110. So an important thing to remember is this is just the general rule for writing an arithmetic sequence. And an arithmetic sequence is whenever to get from one term to the next, you add or subtract the same number.